Hi everybody. Today we are going to be looking at a real world assignment and how I would go about researching this. So I'm looking at the CSU Global Class Communications 300 and I'm looking at Module 8 in the Portfolio Project. So this is going to be the most important, important thing in this class. This is kind of like your final. So I'm just going to be looking at option number one here. We're going to write a paper. Option number one, politics in the age of digital information overload, Facebook's policy to allow misleading political ads. So you're going to read this case study that's going to give you information about this. And then there, you're going to answer these central questions. And I won't read these to you. I think you have the questions. Uh, they're asking you some really good questions here. Basically, I think what when you need to have a paper of eight to ten pages, pretty long, and you need to have at least eight to ten scholarly sources, okay? And you may use the course required readings and the sources listed as further information on the case study webpage. I'm going to use more than just this. The eight to ten scholarly sources are going to be good, but I'm going to use more than that. I'm going to meet that requirement. That's the first thing that I'm going to say. But I'm going to have a lot of other sources as well in here. And I think that'll help me with the paper. I think it will be easier. So I'm going to approach it like that. So Here's how I would now first off before we start writing this there are bigger issues here that we're talking about and I would make a note of these we're basically we're talking about Facebook and political information and how Facebook has taken such a dominant role in our society uh, what kind of responsibility does Facebook have what kind of responsibility do content creators have they're asking you here about uh, how do we feel about John Stuart Mill's arguments for unrestrained free speech? Has the evolution of technology and the overload of information in our area mitigated this? Are we living in a different world now where freedom of speech needs to be curtailed? So we're talking about social media, we're talking about political advertisement, but really I think what we're talking about here is freedom of speech, and I'm going to approach it like that. So without any further ado, I will show you how I would research this. So starting off from the library website, instead of jumping into the ocean here where we search all the databases at once, I would start off with some individual databases to start the search. This is how I would do it. This may not be how you would do it. I'm going to show you how I would do it and hopefully, uh, hopefully this will work for you. If not, I'm going to eventually jump around to the ocean. People usually want to jump right in here and search everything. I think that might be a little bit of overkill for this. I'm going to start off a little bit smaller. So. What I'm going to do first, I went into the databases. I'm going to go to O here, and I'm looking for opposing viewpoints. This is a database that deals specifically with controversial social issues, which is what we're talking about here. So I'm going to click on opposing viewpoints. I'll just run a few quick searches to show you how this works. So I'm going to type up in here Facebook. Now, if it comes up in bold, it means they've created a whole page for with for Facebook, which is great. That's what we're looking for. So I click on Facebook. Okay, now we have this page on Facebook, which is great. This first part here is just an overview about Facebook. It's not peer reviewed, but it could be very useful to learn about just some general information about Facebook. There's key events, social impact and safety concerns. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Targeted ads, fake news and privacy concerns. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Okay, so that's just kind of an overview. Now, if you only want to use the academic peer-reviewed journals, which means the same thing, here are academic journals. They've, they've selected in this database 72 different academic journal articles, same thing as peer-reviewed articles, that uh, they have selected for you. So it's less overkill, it's just they've selected some they think might be good. Here we go. Detecting fake news on Facebook, the role of emotional intelligence. Great, we could use that one. Facebook is an engagement tool. How are public benefit organizations? Yeah, maybe. If we wanted to see all the academic journal articles they've selected, we would click right here and just kind of look through these. And they've selected a lot of different academic journal articles here that they think might be interesting to you. So instead of just sending you 10 million of them, which you're going to find in the big discovery system, uh, you're just going to find some selected ones. So I think it's I think these are some very useful articles here. So we're going to go back. There's definitely some things in there you could use, and you could probably get to your 10, your 8 to 10 peer-reviewed articles there. There are 72 different ones of them there. Okay. Here are, this is what I love about this database. These are not peer-reviewed. These are like professionally written argumentative essays. These also I'm going to use in addition to my peer-reviewed journal articles. These are uh articles written very much supporting one point of view or another you've got featured viewpoints which are the most popular ones then you've got viewpoints and they just show you really hot button issues 
about this. Argumentative essays, they're not peer reviewed generally, but I'm still going to use some of these. Facebook should not ban fringe perspectives. Bingo. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Facebook risks starting a war on knowledge. I would look at those too. I would go in here to the viewpoints to see all 28 of them. And then there's just going to be all sorts of interesting how Facebook and Google change the advertising game. We're talking about political ads here. I could very much use that article. And just looking more here we go. The blurred lines of modern media. There's probably something pretty good in there. Okay, so it looks it looks pretty good. There's definitely some things I would use in there. Now, those are going to be in addition to the peer-reviewed articles I'm going to use, but I would use those also. Let's look at what else they have in this database. Primary sources here. I co-founded Facebook. It's time to break it up. I would definitely take a look at that video. Here's a section from a reference book on Facebook. Infographics. Self-reported Facebook use among U.S. adults. Let's take a look at that infographic. These are going to be statistics for us. Just some quick Okay, here we go. By age group, here's how, here's how many people use Facebook by age group. So 81% of people 18 to 29 use it. 30 to 49 year olds, 78%, almost the same amount. So you can see the older you get, the less people are using Facebook. By race and ethnicity, uh, very interesting to look at some of those information, some of those uh, information graphics. I would use those in my paper as well. Let's see what else in our little tour here. There are some radio stories. Those are national public radio stories. Here is newspaper articles, probably be some really good things, and magazine articles, as well as just straight statistics down here. Facebook ads spend by lobbyist groups on reproductive rights. This would be great. This is exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so this is kind of a one-stop shop database. I would start with opposing viewpoints with this. Okay, now uh, the next thing I would do, oh, and if you want to get a link to this, this page you would click here get link this is the link you would use if you wanted to save that link okay these links will expire all right so let's do another search here we're also talking about freedom of speech freedom of speech there we go it came up in bold that means they have a whole page created for it because this paper is not just about Facebook it's also about freedom of speech okay first thing I'm going to do on this page I'm going to open up the freedom of speech summary here just read all about freedom of speech, the main ideas, limitations on freedom of speech. That's exactly what we're talking about. Political speech and spending, exactly. Misconceptions about the First Amendment. All of this could be very useful. Free speech on the Internet. There you go. Exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Again, I'm getting started. This is the first step of my research. It's not the last step. It's the first step. And I like starting with, for this topic, I like this database, Opposing Viewpoints, for how easy it's making me, making it for me to just navigate a lot of different things. Here we go. Academic journals. There's 193 peer-reviewed articles they've selected that will help you understand what's going on with free speech. Now, again, peer-reviewed articles are not the same as internet websites or Facebook posts or magazine articles. They're very specific. A lot of technical language, they're written at a very high level, okay? But I would go in here to these academic journals, and I would look at these 193 articles they've selected and see if any of these might be interesting to use. And I think I'm seeing some pretty good ones here. Just looking at here, freedom of expression and alternatives for internet governance, prospects and pitfalls. Perfect. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, there's a lot of good things in here. So those are those are the peer-reviewed articles. We already, just with those two lists, we could easily find more than 10 peer-reviewed articles. I'm going to use more than peer-reviewed articles, though. So here again, we have the featured viewpoints and the viewpoints. These are the, uh, the very pointed, uh, professionally written argumentative essays that will pretty much show one side of the issue or argue for one side. Okay, uh, the First Amendment doesn't guarantee the rights you think it does. That might be interesting to look at it. Uh, why free speech needs a new definition in the age of internet and Trump tweets. Great. These are exactly what I'm looking for. And if I wanted to look at all of the viewpoints, I would just click into the viewpoints. There's 414 essays they've chosen in here to look at. And I think <clears throat> there would be some really, really good. Is cancel culture silencing open debate? Uh, there are risks of shutting down opinions we disagree with. I love that. And I would use that. There's my Facebook should not ban fringe perspectives. I, I love that. These, these look great to me. Again, they're not, 
They are not um, peer reviewed, but they're very, very useful. And we even have some Facebook stuff in here. Okay, so let's go back. <clears throat> let's look a little bit further at this. And here we go with uh, primary sources, excerpt from the First Amendment. That's great. Uh, references, freedom of speech. These are from reference books on this. Infographics, perceptions of being able to freely express political opinions by selected characteristics. That's great. Let's take a closer look at that. And look at that. By age group, these are people who feel safe. Uh, the people who feel the current political environment prevents me the current political climate prevents me from saying things I believe. 62% of all people uh, surveyed think that, yes, the current political climate keeps me from saying what I believe. And across the board, pretty much all ages feel the same way. Uh, the youngest people, 18 to 29 year olds, still 55% more than half of them feel they can't speak freely. Here we go. Employed Americans' fears of losing their jobs or missing out on job opportunities if their political opinions became known. This is great. And this is on Facebook. Everything's known. Anyone can find out anything about you. This this could be very interesting for the paper. Let me go back here. Let's look at a few other things. Here's magazine articles. Great. Here's some videos on it. And again, we're talking about freedom of speech here. Statistics. Americans' opinions regarding freedom of speech and cancel culture from 2020. That would be great to look at. Okay, and we have related topics here you might want to look at. Censorship. Ooh, that would be a really good one. We're also talking about censorship here, right? We're also talking about democracy. We're also talking about mass media. And any of these that we click on would take us directly there. Let's go to censorship. Because we're also, we're not talking about just freedom of speech. We're talking about censorship. And here's the same thing. All of these great things. Here's the, the breakdown of the topic. Here's academic journals. Here's uh, featured viewpoints on this topic. And, uh, and so these are the, the professionally published um, argumentative essays, basically not peer reviewed, but here's the peer reviewed stuff right here. Primary sources, sections from reference books, infographics, US opinions regarding book banning, very similar issue to what we're talking here. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to this database opposing viewpoints and how I would use it in uh, looking at this assignment here in uh, COM 300. So the next thing I would probably do, I would go to the library, back to the library website, I would go to eBooks. Again, I'm going to come back around to this huge database searching everything at the end. I'm going to go to eBooks. I'm going to go into my favorite eBook database, the eBook, the EBSCO eBook collection. <clears throat> and I'm just going, these are all going to be eBooks, okay? We're getting a lot more, more basic here. Let's see what I can find. Just books on Facebook. Okay, I've got 150 different books here. This could be a good one. Becoming Facebook, the 10 challenges that define the company that's disrupting the world. Let me open that one up and show you how I would navigate this book. So it's a full book. What I would do is open up the table of contents right over here. And I would just go to where here we go. Challenges on the road from all surround. Well, I would go to the future here. I'm looking at the future. Messaging becomes the medium. Okay, transfer. Okay, so there's some good stuff here. Anything that I'm interested in, I can just click on this section, and that chapter of the book, or that section of the book will open up for me. And there it is. Okay. Let's go back here. I'm going to do another search. I'm going to type in freedom of speech. Search. Okay. And we have 24 different books on this. Terrorist advocacy on the internet, free speech issues, that could, there could be something good there. Freedom of information in a post 9-11 world, there could be something interesting there. The politics of free speech and the return of conservative liber libertarianism, that would be good. Quotations on free speech, could be good.
And this might want to be good. We're talking about self-regulation and human progress. Do we want the government to regulate everything we see online, or can we do that ourselves? So I might take a look at this book. I'm going to go again to the table of contents. Self-regulating free speech. I want to look at that. Because do we have to regulate everything? That's what we're talking about in this paper. Or can people kind of regulate themselves and make judgments for themselves what they think is good or bad? Okay. I think that looks great. Okay. So that's how you use the ebook database or that particular ebook database. There's a lot of them in here. That was one of them. They all work fairly similarly. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is go here to search all library databases. We have this set specifically for peer reviewed. You can turn that off if you want. I'll show you how I would use it. I don't, you can, you can certainly type in words here and start searching here, but it will take you to the advanced search screen. So I just click right here, the advanced search button and go directly in here. Okay. Now everything's going to be peer reviewed. I'll leave that set because we pretty much have lots of resources. Now I'll just type in here, Facebook, and uh, maybe we could say, uh, misinformation. Maybe that would be a good place to start. Okay. We have 457 articles that come up. Let me, let's make these a little more current. Let's say from 2016 to now. And that was pretty good, but maybe that's not exactly what I'm looking for. How about we say, political in the second box, Facebook and political. Here we go. Now we're getting into, into some things that look really useful. How political candidates use of Facebook relates to the election outcomes. This is what we're talking about in our assignment, really about political ads. Here we go. And this one looks great. The political economy of Facebook advertising, election spending, regulation, and targeting the line. That's perfect. I'm going to put that in my folder to look at later. I am just looking through here. Facebook and political cynicism. Sure, that looks good. Okay. Reliance on Facebook for news and its influence on political engagement. Great. Throw that in the folder. Now, at some point, if I want to go look at what's in the folder, I just go up here. Now here's my here's my articles I have in this folder. Okay. And um, they're all looking good. Now the problem is I can use these now and I can do what I want with them. But the problem is as soon as I close this browser, it's going to lose these articles. So what I would do is go to sign in. And I would I would create don't have an account sign up, just create your own personalized folders in here. It's a free, it doesn't cost anything. It's a free little extra level of organization you have within this database. It's a free folder account. Basically, I'm just going to sign in here since I've already done this. And then I have those articles I set aside, but I have a lot more here. So what I could do is if I want to, and these, it knows it's me. That's me, Jeff. I can come back to these anytime that I want. Um, but I have all these other subfolders in here too. So maybe what I would do is click and click a new one here and create my Facebook political folder. Then after I've created that, I would find because I have a lot of articles I've gathered from other research sessions in here too. So I'll find the ones. There we go. Facebook and political cynicism. There's one I just gathered on Facebook. There we go. And see all these, I've gathered these other ones from other sessions I was in when I was signed in. There we go. And then I would take those checked articles and I would put those into my Facebook political folder. And then I can go back to them whenever I want. Let me go back and run a new search. And we, we certainly have way more than enough information now, but I'm just going to keep going here a little bit. Freedom of speech, 
Facebook. Run a search here. Okay. Looks like we have some good stuff here. The arbiters of what our voters see. Definitely. Oh, wait. I already have that one added. I think I added that to a different folder. And let's say I keep seeing this stuff on Myanmar in here. I keep seeing things on Myanmar, and I'm not interested in that. Let's say on the last box, I'll say not. Not Myanmar. Remove that from my search. Now we have less, and now I'm not seeing those articles on Myanmar. And it tells me ones I already have in my folder, so that I don't try to add them again. I've already got that one. And there's a lot on I keep seeing on terrorism in here, too. So I'll say not Myanmar or terror. Now I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to put an asterisk right there so I get terrorist, terrorist, or terrorism. That's a little placeholder. It's truncation that will take the place of any ending on that word. Let's eliminate that from the search too because that's not really what I'm talking about here. Okay, and it keeps we keep getting less and now I'm seeing less, but they're the articles that are more focused on what I'm really interested in. Okay, and any any of these that I want, I can add to my here we go. That one oh, that one's already in there. Okay, and if any of these look good, I've already been doing some searching on this. Here we go. I would add this right here to my I have a lot of folders in here, you can see. There's my Facebook political. Okay. And then speech across borders. How about I add that one too? Now when I go to add this. It's in there. Okay. So let's say I'm done researching for the day. I'm going to close this. Now tomorrow, I'm ready to start researching again. I'm going to click advanced search here. And the first thing I'm going to do is sign in. Sign in. And now I can go to my folder after I've signed in. Because yesterday I just gathered articles. I didn't really read anything. So then I'd open up my Facebook political. I have another folder here for COM 300. I was working on this earlier. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's, there's my articles. And now I can get down to reading. There's six that I gathered today. I was also can go to my COM 300 folder. I have 10 articles in there. Plus I have all the other articles that I found from opposing viewpoints. So I'm going to have so much more than I need. For this paper. Um, okay, so that's a quick overview of how I would approach this, how I would approach doing the research for this paper. It's kind of fun once you get into it. Um, another thing, if you're in the ebook database, you could also sign into these folders and you would get the same set of folders. Let's put it in here. Freedom. Oops. Of speech. And uh, just do a search here. And I'm going to sign in here to the same folder I was using before, or the same set of folders, because I had a lot of folders in there. Sign in. OK, now any of these that I want to add, maybe I want this one. I'll click here. It'll ask me what folder I want to put it into. I'll put it into my, you can see I have a lot of folders in here, Facebook political. Okay. So now all of those, all of those articles are in the same place. Now this database doesn't have the same, doesn't have the same kind of thing with it, but for all of these, these are all see that big E that's EBSCO. They all have that in there. Okay. So if I were to go to the folder, um, this is the same set of folders in here. There's my Facebook political. <clears throat> I have the articles and I just added that ebook. So anyway, that is a quick, quick intro to how to do this. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to set up an individual Zoom meeting. Um, thanks a lot. And uh, let me know if you have any problems with this or you need any extra help. Thanks a lot. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.